So this video is made in response to this comment. I asked if they would like to see any type of video on anything in particular, and they happen to want this. So here you go. I hope this helps and I hope you like it. So first you're going to need some thin copper that is 0.23 millimeters thick. You will also need a piece of copper that is 0.66 millimeters thick for the base. Also, some sort of stone. I suggest starting with a round stone if this is the first time you've ever done this. You're also going to need a basic ring. I have a video for this, and I'll be putting it in the description. So, let's get started with this. First, you're going to need to take your stone and measure it just like this. You basically want to measure it up to the point of where it starts to curve in. That's where you want your metal to come up to. If you go too high, you'll end up with too, me too much metal, and if you're too low, it won't hold the stone. Once you get that measurement, lock your calipers where you want them, and take your thin piece of copper and scratch a line across it using one of the edges so you get a perfectly straight line across. So normally I use the jewelry saw whenever I need to cut metal, but this is way too thin for my saw or the saw blades I use. So just use some tin snips like these, the straight ones, and try to go across it as straight as you possibly can. You should end up with something like this. After doing that, you're going to want to heat the piece up or anneal the piece so it's easier to bend into a flat shape. I'm going to be using the same torch that you can go get for about 20 bucks just to show that I can do all this with the same things that you're going to be using. Be very careful, even with this torch you can still melt this metal because it's very thin. So after that and after you quench it in water, try to strain it out as much as possible and don't do what I just did and put it in your fingers and pull because the sides of that are very sharp and like you could see from this I cut my thumb open so don't do that so after gluing my finger back together because that's how I take care of my cuts when I'm working so I don't get anything in them go back to straightening this out you can take two pieces of heavier metal or even your desk and something else that's hard and flat and kind of run it across this to straighten it all out and flatten it out So now you're going to want to measure your stone, and I happen to have something that is the same size as my stone, or a little bit bigger, that I can wrap this around to get the perfect size and shape. If you don't have something like that, you're going to have to just go around the stone and cut it a little bit bigger than it is, and just kind of work with it until you get it to the right shape you need. So you're going to want to test it on your stone to see if it wraps around it all the way and meets or if it overlaps. If it overlaps, that's fine. You can just cut a little bit more off and file it down and make sure everything is nice and square with one another. But if it doesn't wrap all the way around and they do not meet one another, basically throw that piece away and make another one. All right, now we can solder it. What you have to do now is flatten the piece out so both edges meet up almost perfectly so the solder can flow. Once you do this, flux the entire piece and grab a little piece of hard solder. Make sure it's hard solder because we're going to be using multiple solders on this. Carefully put the solder underneath this piece at the joint where you want this piece to be soldered together at. Alright, this is the kind of tricky part. You need to get the whole thing to be red hot without melting it, but you have to melt the solder. So if you melt the piece on accident, it's okay. Just make a new one and try it again. It takes a lot of practice to get it to work properly. So after that first go of soldering, I didn't like how the solder didn't flow all the way through to the top and the bottom. And there was a gap. So, after pickling it, I'm putting it on the third hand, refluxing it, and I'm going to solder it again and use some tweezers to push it together as it's all hot. All 
Alright, so there we go. Now it's all soldered up in one piece, and now we gotta make it back to being round again. If you're using a heart shape or any odd shape, you're gonna have to bend it back with some pliers probably, and use the actual stone itself to guide it back to how it needs to be. Once you do all that, test your stone inside of it and make sure it's snug but not too loose, or to see if it even fits at all. If it doesn't fit at all, you might have to make another piece. You can always make things smaller, but you can't make them bigger without doing a lot of fancy soldering work. All right, so now if your stone is in there, push it out like I did, and you're gonna wanna file down or sand down both edges because they're both really sharp and you don't want sharp edges or the weird texture from the clippers. So putting water on your piece makes it a little bit smoother, especially when you're dealing with this small of a piece. You want it to be as smooth as possible when you're sanding it. Alright, so get that other piece of copper I was telling you you needed, and put your piece on it. Make sure it fits with a decent amount of area around it. I'm going to cut mine because I don't need this much of it. Also, a quick update if you watch any of my other videos, I no longer use oil when I'm cutting things. I use cut lube, and the reason why I use it is it's less messy, and it works on a multitude of tools that I use. So. I would get some of that if you're going to be doing any type of cutting. So now we're going to solder. Put the bezel in the middle of the base plate, then flux everything, and put two pieces of medium solder on either end of the circle. And why we're using medium solder is we've already used hard solder. So medium solder will melt before the hard solder does, so you can solder individual pieces without undoing solder points. So if you don't have a fancy screen tripod thing like I have, use a third arm to hold the bottom plate. If you don't have a third arm, use two pieces of something that won't catch on fire and hold it up so the bottom of it is exposed and you can get to it with the torch because we're going to be heating this from the bottom. So with all that being said, slowly heat the bottom of this plate evenly. If you have to, just go in small circles around the bottom, you'll slowly see everything start to change color on top and bubble, and just make sure your solder doesn't jump around too much. It being this small, it really doesn't matter if it moves too much because it's going to spread out and get underneath the two pieces like you need, but be careful of that. As soon as the solder melts, only keep the torch on it for about one to two more seconds and then take it away and then quench the piece. Alright, so now check it and make sure that the solder float all the way around the piece. If there's no gaps or anything, you're good and you can move on to the next step and cut it out. If not, pickle it again and re-solder it. So after you're done, it should look like this. Once I get to this point, I like to file off all the edge that goes around this because when I cut it I didn't want to cut into the bezel so I cut a little bit farther out from it. Take a file and go around the edges of it and cut it all the way down to meet the bezel. You don't have to do this but I like to to make it look flush. So there we go. Once you do that it's all fire scaled now so you're gonna want to throw it into the pickle for a while. While it's in the pickle though, you're going to want to take the ring that you made and put it in a vise if you have one, if not just hold it in your hand and file down an area on it that is either the same size as your bezel piece or smaller so it has somewhere to sit flat on it when we solder it together. Now we're going to solder these together. Make sure to line these up exactly where you want them using the third hand to hold the ring piece. Once you have them exactly how you want them, put a piece of easy solder next to the ring where it's touching the bottom of the bezel. Then flux everything, recheck it all, and you can start soldering then. Alright, now we have to solder this without melting the bezel. So what you want to do is focus on the ring band first, then go over the whole thing. Once everything is at the same temperature, the solder will flow and everything will be stuck together and just take your heat away from it as soon as you see the solder flow into everything. Alright, and just quench it after that and check it. 
make sure that it is actually on there and you can try to pull on it a little bit. If it pops right off, it means you didn't put enough heat onto both pieces and it only stuck to one. If it's stuck together, great. So after all that, we're going to put it in pickle solution and then we're gonna clean up the solder joint on the side of the bezel. And then I'm gonna kind of just go over and smooth all of it out after all that filing. You don't have to if you want a more of a tarnished rustic look but this is what I'm doing so what I'm using for this is a rotary tool which you can use a Dremel if you have one or you can even use sandpaper but it's gonna take a lot longer but I'm using rubber diamond bits to do this now we're gonna use some files to make the bezel uneven and kind of worn looking like how the picture was in the beginning you could also use basically everything up until this point to make a very smooth clean shiny ring but that's not what we're going for, so cut up the bezel. You can use different needle files to get different cuts and different designs. This whole part is really up to you what you do to it. Try not to cut too far down with the files so it still covers the stone like you wanted it to. Just for a little added effect, I'm going to cut some of the outside of the ring and then polish the inside of the ring just so it looks good and feels good on your finger. This is liver of sulfur. You use it to tarnish silver and copper. It'll basically turn it completely black. What you do is put it inside of a glass jar with warm to pretty hot water and just submerge your piece into it. You can submerge it overnight and it'll have more of a buildup of black on it or you can just dip it like I'm doing. So I'm going to use a wire wheel to take off the top layer of this tarnish and it should leave a nice brush effect on it and have high and low spots. And then I'm going to polish the inside of the bezel so light will actually reflect out of the stone. So make sure your stone still fits in the bezel after all that work you just did on it. Next you're going to need a bezel rocker to push the bezel over your stone. Start on one side, press it in, go to the opposite side and press that side in and then do it to the rest of the stone. This will make it so it doesn't move around and it'll set evenly. After that you're gonna need a bezel varnisher which kind of looks like a knife that is completely dull and smooth. Take that and rub it along the top edge of your bezel. This will make it super snug and uniform all the way around your stone. After all that, try to move your stone with your finger. If it moves a little bit, go back and try to varnish it some more. If not, you're good. I'm gonna polish the tips of this and go on to the next step. After washing off the polishing compound, it's time to put some renaissance wax on the ring. This will keep it from tarnishing and changing colors. But keep in mind that this wax will come off over time so you have to reapply it. So here's the finished ring. I actually like how it came out. I hope this video helps you make one just like this or even better. I would love to see what you actually make. So leave a comment and show me. So if you like this video, Feel free to give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down. Subscribe if you want to see more of my stuff. And leave a comment if you want to see me make something. This whole video was made possible from a request. So, maybe I can make something that you want. I don't know. Just let me know. I'll see you guys next time.